Hey, my lovely furniture bays. I'm Kristen from Cloud Art. Thanks so much for joining me for my very first YouTube video. And guys, this was much more difficult than I ever imagined. So please go easy on me for now. If you love furniture flipping and DIYs, please click the subscribe button and follow me over on Instagram and Etsy. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you anymore. I found this vintage oak dresser on Facebook Marketplace. It was in fantastic condition. The owners bought it in the late 80s and they took very good care of it. Now with me being a trend follower, every few months I go through a new design obsession and currently it's lime wash paint. I swiped a few pictures from Pinterest as examples and I just can't say enough good things about this look. It's textured, moody, and just irresistibly warm and inviting. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know I love texture. As a content creator for Country Chic Paint this month, I wanted to see if I could recreate the look. Step one, clean, clean, clean. The most important step. I use crud cutter, the kind that doesn't need to be wa washed off, and it's such a time saver. I grabbed a plastic bag and started to remove the hardware. These poles are just a little bit too modern for the look that I'm going for, so I'll save them and reuse them on a future project. After I numbered all the drawers, because I'm a little bit extra, I moved on to the next step. I either use Bondo or Dap wood filler to fill the screw holes. I just apply it with a putty knife. Often you'll need to let it dry and repeat this step for smooth coverage. But since I'm not concerned about a smooth finish here, one application was fine. After letting it dry for a few hours, I came back with my surf prep sander and sanded the entire piece with 120 grit sandpaper. I then used my shop back to vacuum out the inside. This here is my rider guy, Mr. Mister. I use him to help smooth out my finishes and I couldn't do this work without him. Love you, boo. Now it's time to prime. Just using a chip brush here since I'm not concerned with getting a smooth finish. I actually want to create a little bit of texture. This clear primer from Country Chic is water-based, so it goes on smooth and cleans up easily. Vanilla frosting chalk paint is what I chose for my base coat. When researching how to lime wash paint, the directions included a white primer coat, so vanilla frosting will serve as my primer. Most of the time when I'm painting, I use the brush and roll method. I learned how to do this about 10 years ago from Pinterest, and I've been painting this way ever since. You basically load your brush with a good amount of paint, brush it on, and then roll. I use a foam roller for a smooth finish. You can also roll using a paint tray, but I feel like this is less time consuming and it definitely helps conserve paint. So now we're getting to the good part. This color is a deep black by Country Chic, it's called Licorice, and I'm mixing it with about one and a half tablespoons of their texture powder to thicken it up a bit and help create that lime wash look. Guys, I'm sorry, I forgot to record this next part, but after adding about a tablespoon of water and mixing it well, I slowly added some vanilla frosting until I reached my desired bluish gray shade. This four inch wood stain brush is your absolute key to success for achieving the lime wash look. It's fluffy and wide and allows for covering large areas to help create that light and feathery look. Lime wash painting is all about creating clouds. Maybe that's why I'm drawn to it. After dipping my brush in paint and misting it, I made the clouds by using a crosshatch pattern to form circle-ish, if that's a word, shapes in random sections, eventually blending them together. So each area ends up drying at different times, giving you that blotchy yet blended effect.
In an effort to create even more of a watercolor look, I grabbed Mr. M and I sprayed water in circular puddles in random spots. Some are large, some are small. I gave them a few minutes to be absorbed by the chalk paint and dry up on their own, and then I used my hair dryer on low heat and a good distance away as not to make the water bleed and drip. I then used the large brush to dab the water up in circular patterns. I turned up the dryer to high when most of the puddles had almost dried up and I was really happy with the dreamy look. I know it's a little bit difficult to see. It's probably my lighting. Hopefully my filming skills will improve over the next few months. Um, but I promise it's there as I get a little bit closer. See, you can see it now. See, right there. I wanted to keep my finish matte, so I used wax to seal it. I first brushed on a coat of clear wax by Country Chic, and I used my lint-free shop cloths to wipe them back. When my clear wax coat was dry, I added a bit of vanilla frosting paint to my clear wax and applied it. The white wax helps to highlight the texture details and lighten it up. Now to clean the most elegant, romantic brass pools you ever did see. First scrub with Dawn and Country Chic brush cleaner, then boil them in water, vinegar, and baking soda. Not gonna lie, it's really the worst smell ever, and this is footage of my daughter running out of the house because she hates it. When it's time to drill new holes for the hardware, I use these plastic drilling templates. Before the reveal, here is a look at the before. I love mixing styles and textures, hard and soft, and giving the pieces I create balance using the unexpected.
Hope you guys enjoyed my video, learned something new, and were inspired to create a work of art of your own. Thanks for watching.